I know it has been a while, but today I am back with a new Lightroom editing tutorial. And in this video I'm going to show you how I edited and developed this photo into this start to finish. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I share my Lightroom editing workflow. So if you're here for the very first time and you love photography like me, it might be a good idea to subscribe. I am sure that <laughs> I am sure that you watched my last week video about long exposure photography and minimalism. I love this minimalistic composition with this ethereal look. And so I thought it's about time to make a Lightroom editing tutorial choosing an image that has a very similar look. So super minimalistic composition, very ethereal. Morning dream. This image was taken uh, in uh, 2014 in Paraggi. Paraggi is a very, very small village between uh, Portofino and Santa Margherita. Liguria, Italy, possibly less than 30 kilometers from Genoa, where I was born. I was there with my mom. It was a weekend in December and the picture was taken at sunrise. Although it was raining and it was cold, I thought I wanted to have a memory of that weekend. So I got up, took my tripod, my camera, and went out to search for a composition. And this is what I found. And as it often happened to me, when I have very little expectations, I end up taking home one of my favorite pictures. Anyways, enough of the background story. I guess you know it all. Let's move into Lightroom and develop this image together. A little coffee before we start. And I will also use this moment to thank the Photo Tick Collection for sponsoring this video. This is the Histogram Tea bestseller. If you want to support my channel, check it out. Maybe get one for yourself. Link in the description below at tdufo.com store. Thank you. Now let's go into Lightroom. And here we are in Lightroom. You can see this image was taken on December the 6th, 2014. I made a copy of the original photo so that we can start the editing process from scratch. 119 seconds, F8, ISO 64, I used the 24 to 70 millimeter lens that I used to have at 60 millimeter focal length. Clearly, I used an ND filter. You can see both from the blue color cast and the smooth water. I used a 10 stops neutral density filter from Lee Filters, the big stopper. I will click on the I key in order to get rid of the information and I will click on the D in order to get into the develop module. If you have a look to the histogram, not this histogram, to the histogram of the photo, you can see that there is a lot to do. The image is dark, it is underexposed, we need to open this file, there is a lot to do. But the very first thing I will do is actually opening the lens corrections panel. And you possibly notice that while I opened the lens corrections, the basic panel collapsed and closed. How can you set these in your Lightroom? If you go 
right next to lens correction and click right on your mouse you can see that I have selected solo mode. Solo mode means that every time I open a panel everything else all the other panels will close. For me this is easier so that I can focus just on the part on the panel that I'm working on and I'm not distracted by all the other panels open at the same time. Just in case you want to work like I do. In the lens correction panel I will uh, remove tag on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. There is no distortion or vignetting that I need to correct manually. So now I can open the basic panel. In the basic panel the first thing I will do is to change the color profile. For this image I will select the Adobe color profile. And one of the main issue in this photo as you can see is the blue cast. This is a very easy thing to fix. And there are multiple ways to fix the white balance. I usually use this white balance selector and select in my image either a white, pure white, either a neutral, gray. But with this blue color cast is really difficult to find a neutral target. So instead of using the white balance selector I will fix my white balance manually and I will use the temperature slider and I will move my slider to the right until my image will look a little more natural. And I think that here 35,000 will work. I will set here for now. I'm not going to touch the tint. And looking at my histogram, I can see that my image is very underexposed. Maybe by a full stop. So let me drag this to the right. I will give a full plus one. I will uh, slightly increase the contrast. A plus six. And now holding the shift key down, I will double click on whites and double click on blacks. This basically is completely opening the full range, the full dynamic range of this image. And possibly this is a little too much. You can see that my history will completely move to the right. So I will drag it back a little bit. And by clicking on the Y key, you can see with very few adjustments, we already made quite an improvement on the image. Click on the Y key again in order to get rid of the before image. Now I will uh, open the shadows a little more. And, uh, and I will not touch the highlights because in this case I don't want to darken the sky as I'm searching for a very ethereal look which is what I created with this image. As you can see there is very little contrast in the sky. The sky is very white and I think this helps to give to the image that surreal, peaceful, serene look that I'm searching for. So this is my reference and this is my image. I have a little more work to do. I will decrease the clarity a little bit. I'm not touching the texture. I'm not touching the dehaze. I will add a little bit of vibrance. And the vibrance you remember is increasing the saturation of the non-dominant colors. And I will add a little bit of saturation which is basically increasing the saturation to every single color in the photo. I open the tone curve panel and I will add a medium contrast. I will now open the hue, saturation and luminance panel. And here I have the three sub panel hue, saturation and luminance. I'm going to start with the hue. And uh, in order to understand which color slider I need to use, I can drag the target on the color that I want to change or it's better to say to adjust 
And as you can see, if I am going over the water, the aqua color is select. So by moving this slider, I'm making adjustments only in that specific color range. And I like this. I'm not making any adjustments in the split toning panel. Let me open the detail panel. And here, as you might know already, by holding down the Alt key and moving to the right, the masking slider, you can select where your sharpening is going to happen. So for instance, if I don't want to touch the sky, I don't want to touch the water, I only want to touch the pier and the horizon line, I will make sure to slide the masking to the right until only those elements are selected in white. Whatever is black is not going to be affected by the sharpening. At this point, I can increase my sharpening until it doesn't look weird. I can also click in in order to make sure that I'm happy with the, the amount of sharpening that I am adding to the photo. I will then reduce the radius and increase the detail of my sharpening. And this is how usually I like to set my sharpening for landscape photos. Click on the Z key in order to get back to the full picture. I'm not going to touch the noise reduction. And right now we are done with the general adjustments of this photo. Let's go into the local adjustments. Looking at the final result, there is a little more to do to this photo. And let's start from the sky. The sky that I want to achieve is uh, less contrasty and a little brighter. So I will use a graduated filter. I will double click on effect to erase the previous settings that I used. I will hold the shift key, click on the mouse and drag down my graduated slider. By holding the shift key, you keep your graduated filter parallel to the horizon. So now all my adjustments will happen only in the upper part of my image. And if I increase my exposure, as you can see, only the sky is affected. I will reduce the contrast. I will also reduce the clarity and I will move the noise slider to the right in order to reduce any potential noise from the sky. Now I will create a new graduated filter that I will apply to the bottom of my image. Again, click on the shift key. This time I'm dragging my graduated filter from the bottom to the top. I will uh, increase my exposure a little bit, quite a bit. But here I will increase the contrast. I'm not touching the highlights. I'll increase the shadows. I will drag down the blacks, a little less clarity, increase the saturation. And this is it. And now you can see that uh, in this image, we have this yellow buoy that I don't have here. And I got rid of the buoy here in Lightroom, not in Photoshop. I just uh, used uh, the spot removal and I treat the buoy like a dust spot on my sensor. So I set my brush on the heel and done. The buoy is not there anymore because I want this clean look. The buoy really didn't fit my image. Now, in this image, there is a little more details into the pier, a little more colors. And in order to achieve the same look in this image, my adjustment has to be even more local. So I will use a brush. Where I have a very high contrast, I will uh, reduce the blacks, increase the texture, increase the clarity, increase the saturation, and the sharpness. And now, in order to be more precise in uh, where I apply my brush, I will uh, 
hold the space bar and you can see that my pointer changes into a zoom so that if I click I will actually be able to zoom in. This is now a one-to-one -one scale of my image. I will also click on the show selected mask overlay in order to be able to control which area are affected by my brush. And now I can finally start painting. And this brushing process is possibly the most uh, tedious and uh, uh, difficult, if you wish, part of the entire Lightroom workflow for an image like this. But I recommend you to take your time when you apply these local adjustments in order to make sure that you will obtain the result that you are expecting. As you can see, this is the starting point. This is uh, the raw file. And this instead is my final result. I hope you like this video and I hope that you like my photo. If you are interested in a print of this photo, check the link down in the description below. But I mainly hope that you learned something new and that this video will help you to improve your Lightroom editing workflow. I think I said it all for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.